of love of God given by Lord Chaitanya. Gore Premanande. <coughs> so, Srimad Bhagavatam, I hope you like the verse. I thought it would be a little change of pace, but I think it's fine, it's pretty good. Where's our yogini? Did she leave already? She's gone. She's standing on her head somewhere. Mm. Huh? Hmm? She's in the flower room. Okay. Tell her to bring her flowers to the room. <laughs> Main room. Hey, Yogini, you there? Vina, 
This is I made I picked this verse simply for her. <laughs> so I hope she likes the verse. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Pranasya Sodayan Margam. Pura Kumbhaka Rekachai. Pratikulena Pachitam Yatastiram Machanchalam Pranasya Soda Yed Bargam Pura Kumbhaka Reka Chai Pratikulena Vachitam Yatastiram Machanchalam Pranasya soda yen margam Pura kumbaka chekar hai Pratikulena vachitram Yatastiram achanchalam Chitam Yadasti Rama Chancha Rasta Soda Yamaka Sinatina Garechakai Pranasya a vital air, so that yet one should clear margam, the passage, pura kumbhaka rekachai, by inhaling, retaining, and exhaling, pratikulena, by reversing, va, or chittam, the mind. Yata, so that, stiram, steady, achanchalam, free from disturbances. So this is Kapila Dave's instructions on devotional service from the third canto, 28th chapter, verse number nine. He's instructing his mother. In the previous verse, I'll read that. 
After controlling one's mind and sitting postures, one should spread a seat in a secluded and sanctified place. Sit there in an easy posture, keep the body erect, and practice breath control. Today's verse. The yogi should clear the passage of vital air by breathing in the following manner. First, he should in inhale very deeply, then hold the breath in, and finally exhale. Or, reversing the process, the yogi can first exhale, then hold the breath outside, and finally inhale. This is done so that the mind may become steady and free from external disturbances. Srila Prabhupada's purport. These breathing exercises are performed to control the mind and fix the mind on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Savai Mana Krishna Paravara Vindayo. The devotee, Ambaram Barish Maharaj, fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna 24 hours a day. The process of Krishna consciousness is to chant Hare Krishna and to hear the sound attentively so that the mind is fixed upon the transcendental vibration of Krishna's name, which is non-different from Krishna, the personality. The real purpose of controlling the mind by prescribed method of clearing the passage of the life air is achieved immediately if one fixes his mind directly on the lotus feet of Krishna. The Hatha Yoga system or breathing system is especially recommended for those who are very absorbed in the bodily concept of existence. But one who can perform the simple process of chanting Hare Krishna can fix the mind easily. Three different activities are recommended for clearing the passage of breath, Puraka, Kumbhaka, and Rechaka. Inhaling the breath is called Puraka, Sustaining it within is called kumbhaka, and finally exhaling it is called rechaka. These recommended processes can also be performed in the reverse order. After exhaling, one can keep the air outside for some time and then inhale. The nerves through which inhalation and exhalation are conducted are technically called ida and pingala. The ultimate purpose of clearing the Inda and Pikala passages is to divert the mind from material enjoyment. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, one's mind is his enemy and one's mind is also his friend. Its position varies according to the different dealings of the living entity. If we divert our mind to thoughts of material enjoyment, then our mind becomes an enemy. If we concentrate our mind on Krishna, the lotus, his lotus feet, then our mind is a friend. By the yoga system of Puraka, Kumbhaka, and Richaka, or by directly fixing the mind on the sound vibration of Krishna or on the form of the Krishna, the same purpose is achieved. In Bhagavad Gita, it says that one must practice the breathing exercises, Abhyas Yoga, Yuktena. By virtue of these processes of control, the mind cannot wander to external thoughts. Chaitasa Nanya Gamina. Thus, one can fix his mind constantly on the Supreme Personality of Godhead and can attain yati, him. Practicing the yoga system of exercise and breath control is very difficult for a person in this age. And therefore, Lord Chaitanya recommended kirtaniya sadarahi. One should always chant the holy name of the Supreme Lord Krishna because Krishna is the most suitable name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The name Krishna and the Supreme Person Krishna are non-different. Therefore, if one concentrates his mind on hearing and chanting Hare Krishna, the, result, the same result is achieved. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Mayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunathananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram so the yoga system, as mentioned in Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita in the sixth chapter, Krishna defines the yoga system in a few verses. And the yoga system is a, is a bona fide system of self-realization. It's eight steps. Yama, Niyama, Asana, 
pratyahara, pranayama, pratyahara, pranayama, pratyahara, dharani, dhyana, and eventually samadhi, these eight steps. The yogis would do that. They would sit in a secluded place, free from all, we say, external disturbances, spread some deer skin, face in the northern direction, put themselves in a proper posture, and legs folded with the bottom of the feet touching the inside of the thighs, like that. And then very carefully practice the pranayama system in order to bring the mind under control. Then drag you gradually through that pranayama system and through the process of asana, one gradually starts to control the mind and senses. And then through that process, one gradually directs the mind towards the focusing on the Supreme Personality of Godhead by for putting one's gaze on the tip of one's nose and meditating on the form within the mind. And that's a perfect system. The only problem is it's we can't do it in this age. <laughs> Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come with a system that is, because in this age, manda sumanda mateo, manya bhaga upadritaha. That in this age, people are, this is spoken by Sutta Goswami in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. People are not qualified in this age for spiritual practice. They're very much inclined to material activities such as making money and collecting man a lot of material things and expert at finding new ways to enjoy the senses. This is, this is the age of Kali. Therefore, Manda, Sumanda, Mateo, Manyabhaga, Upadrita. People are uh, lazy, misguided, always disturbed, and they're not inclined to spirituality. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord. He knows that. So therefore, he's come with the process of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare. Glorifying the Lord by chanting the holy names of the Lord is the, um, is the goal of pure devotional service in this age, which leads to the realization of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. But Prabhupada said, you can't even do that. <laughs> we have a hard time doing that. Try doing the yoga system. <laughs> but there are some things within the yoga system that are, can be assisted in our practice of Hare Krishna. Therefore, pranayama is very much, can be used in devotional service to help control the mind. So here it's mentioned Puraka, Kumbhaka, Rechaka. That is breathing in. Exhale. Practice that sometimes, and you'll find you can clear the mind and the passages that are blocked by um, lots of thoughts and just contaminations due to the association of the material energy. And then practice chanting Hare Krishna. It helps to assist in the chanting of Hare Krishna. Why? Because we need to keep the mind from jumping all over like a monkey. And the, monk, the mind is always disturbed because of the association with the external energy. And in this age, the internal external energy is very much active in creating so many opportunities for distractions in this age. So pranayama is good. Pranayama, not only is it mm, helpful in controlling the mind and the senses, but it is also helpful in, um, in bringing about good health. It says, if you want to keep your health good, practice pranayama. Mm -hmm. People sometimes, we're always running to the store for medicines and this sort of, practice pranayama and actually, if you do it properly under the guidance of a teacher, because you need a teacher in order to do this, you can read some books and get some ideas. 
but you may not be able to do the process properly. And this will help to increase the health and also control the mind and senses. That's what the asanas are for. Asanas are helping to control the mind and senses. So one can focus one's consciousness on something, but the yoga system focuses it on various things, or they try to devoid themselves of all thoughts, which is impossible to do. All they do is slow down the process of thoughts and bring it down to um, one or two thoughts. But if you can meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but in this age it's not possible because of the nature of the age. Mm -hmm. yeah. The people and the age itself are contrary to the yoga system. Therefore, most yogis fail <laughs> because in the process of performing yoga, you have to be expert in performing all eight steps because one step leads to the another. And if you are not expert in one of the steps, you can't go to the next step. Only when you complete one step can you move to the next step. And then ultimately, the highest step is samadhi, absorption. But the idea in Krishna consciousness is they, they get absorbed in Krishna through hearing about Krishna and through chanting the glories of Krishna. And of course, if we are very expert in, in doing things, we can also get absorbed in Krishna by serving Krishna, by absorbing oneself in activities of devotional service. So this is the process. So I brought this particular verse up because I thought that this particular inhale-exhale program can be adopted by devotees and it helps to clear the mind. Did you feel any like energy coming in from that? It actually brings in energy. Or you can do the opposite way is you can exhale. <sighs> and then inhale. It helps. I think the devotees here are doing some yoga programs, right? Yeah. So these are things that are recommended. A lot of times, especially for devotees who have a very hard time controlling their mind, yoga is an, it's not the end in itself, but it can assist one in the practice of mind and sense control. Because without controlling the mind and senses, there's no question of, of devotional service. We have to practice that mind and, and not be disturbed by the external environment, which is always giving us opportunities for distraction and disturbances. So one has to practice. And then once you practice these methods, you can also pr connect it to chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There's one great saint in the Christian tradition who chants Hare Krishna. But she uh, uses uh, various types of techniques, and she uses the breathing exercise, in, and that is that when you chant Hare Krishna, you go, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, you bring in Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. See, when the breath is aligned with all the bodily energies, then concentration is natural. If you're chanting Hare Krishna nicely, you will align your breath automatically because the Holy Name does it for you. But to get to that stage of perfect chanting, these other processes can assist us in devotional service. But the thing is, and this is where the danger is, if you think these other processes are the goal, then you can get, you'll, you'll be just a nice yogi that nobody will talk to, right? <laughs> The idea is to use these things to help us control the mind and senses, and that's the goal in Krishna consciousness. When the mind and senses are controlled, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the super soul is already reached. For him, happiness and distress, honor and uh, dishonor, loss and gain are all the same. Do we actually, can we actually see that the dualities of the material energy are non-different than each other? Is heat and cold the same? Loss and gain the same? Honor and dishonor the same? Beauty and ugliness the same? The material energy works in the whole process of opposites. Everything in this world is defined by its opposite. 
you can't understand cold. Uh, you can't understand heat unless you understand cold, and vice versa. There's no such thing as absolute beauty, absolute heat, absolute honor, absolute anything. Everything is relative to its opposite, and it's defined by its opposite. So in that way, we can understand what is the nature of this material world. Everything is in relationship to opposites. <laughs> Hunger is simply the opposite of satisfaction. That's <laughs> when you're satisfied, you can also withdraw from the process of hunger. <laughs> so all these things are, so therefore the yoga system helps us to go beyond all these dualities. But if you practice bhakti yoga perfectly, gradually you can also do that. But these other things, that's why in this third canto, I just read one verse. Kapila Dev is giving a lot of pro points on yoga. Pranayama, Hatha Yoga. This is one verse in about a series of ten verses that he's teaching his mother the process of the yoga system like that. <coughs> so it's in the Bhagavatam, but of course the Acharyas, and especially Srila Prabhupada, helps us to understand what is the actual process in this age in relationship to these other processes. But these other processes work under ideal conditions and under ideal, done by persons who are very highly qualified. <laughs> but no one's qualified in this age, hardly anybody. <laughs> we just went to, uh, it was last weekend, uh, they had yoga day in Zagreb. And uh, the devotees went, <coughs> and I was there. There was all these yogis from three different groups. And they, they were, there was about, I don't know, 150, 200 yogis that came. They all had their mats. <coughs> and they left, spread out on the big lawn in the middle of the city. And then the, uh, the uh, ambassador for America was there. The ambassador for India was there and there's his assistants, and they were, the ambassador of yoga in America was also doing yogi, yoga with all of them. So we were there, <coughs> and we cooked prasadam and we did kirtan. <laughs> and after we did kirtan, many of the yogis came up and said, hey, that was nice. <laughs> because it's a higher taste. You don't really get a higher taste simply going, hmm. There's no higher taste than that. It's just to free yourself from some suffering. But free yourself from suffering is not happiness. Free yourself from suffering actually brings you to the stage where you can begin to start to experience happiness. And only when you go deeper into the yoga system as, as done by the expert yogis, then you can experience um, this process of samadhi or nirvana. And one feels this joy within themselves and doesn't need any external thing. That's one's experiencing the soul completely because the soul is by nature joyful. <clears throat> but you can't stay there <clears throat> because activity is necessary and so you have to perform activity. So that's why we find most yogis who are expert in yoga, after a while they take up material, philanthropical work, they open up hospitals or sell products for health or do some kind of incense business. Because in the nature of life is to perform activity, and activity is based on relationships, and relationships are usually the highest form. So, therefore, in this age, although the yoga system is a bona fide system, it is not recommended. Therefore, bhakti yoga, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yogi nam apisar vesham, madgaten natmanaha, stradavan bhajate yoman, te me yukta tamo mataha. He gives a whole system of yoga. He talks about all the different processes of yoga, hatha yoga, raja yoga, astanga yoga, and he mentions the karma yoga, jnana yoga all the different yogas. And finally at the end he says, but those who are abide in me, who take shelter of me, who engage in my devotional service, they are the topmost yogis. Because simply by connecting with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service, Krishna does everything. 
when you do this a yoga system, it's just you and the system. <laughs> you have to connect with Krishna. And usually, to perfect the yoga system, it takes many, many lifetimes. Many, many lifetimes. So, but we can use different principles of the yoga system that are helpful in bringing about meditation and breath control, which can help in our chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra and in steadying the mind. Because when the mind is steady, then one can focus on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Like that. So I just wanted to bring up this particular verse. But then again, but the whole point is we need to focus on chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra because by proper chanting of the holy name of the Lord, one can immediately get a taste of transcendental happiness. Once, chanting Hare Krishna, just once, not the whole mantra, but just one name, is so powerful. It says that any of the former, because in the yoga systems, you can't get rid of karma like that. They can get rid of some karma, but you can't get rid of par parabdha karma. Parabdha karma is that karma which is manifesting presently. There are different kinds of karma, aparabdha, parabdha karma. Karma has four stages. First you do something, and then a seed is planted based on that, then the seed fructifies, and then once it fructifies, it manifests into a particular result. This is described in nectar devotion. So, therefore, in the yoga system, you can get rid of some of the preliminary effects of karma, but you can't get rid of parabdha karma. But Rupa Goswami in his Namastika says, simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord, all karma, including parabdha karma, is destroyed. What is parabdha karma? This is interesting. What you're experiencing now from your previous karma is still being manifested. You have to work with that. You have to work with that. Even if you're initiated, still there is a residual element of karma that is still being manifested where you have to somehow work through that. It's not very much. It's very small. The example is used that when you, uh, you have a fan and you pull the plug or set the switch off from the fan, the fan doesn't stop immediately. By the force of the turning of the fan, it takes time before... So when you take up the yoga system or any, you've stopped putting the karma into it. But then again, you still have to deal with the residual karma. But in chanting Hare Krishna, all the residual karma is automatically destroyed simply by chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> so devotees are free from karma. Sometimes devotees think that they are, they're getting karma, but actually it's not. It's Krishna karma. Krishna has given you a little bit of a taste of some of the material uh, reactions in just to help to purify you from that attachment in a form of a little suffering like that. But they're not, that's not actually karma, it's Krishna's mercy. Just so we don't get in, attached to sense gratification. And Krishna does that just to uh, make sure you don't go back to where you used to be. But that's Krishna's mercy. <laughs> that's Krishna's mercy. So therefore, by chanting Hare Krishna, and we chant perfect, how do we chant purely? Pure chanting is, it comes by way of, pr of practicing the chanting of the holy name in the mood of uh, Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Trinatapi, Saniche, Natayori, Vasa, Hishnuna. Amani namamana dena kirtaniya sadarahi. By practicing humility, by practicing tolerance, by practicing giving respects to others, and by practicing not wanting respect for yourself, you can kirtaniya sadarahi. You can chant the holy name possibly. So by practicing these four principles given by Lord Chaitanya in his Shikshastakam prayer, because in the Shikshastakam prayer, the whole process of devotional service is given very carefully. That's why in the fifth verse, Lord Chaitanya says, Ayi nanda tanucha kinkaram, patitam mam vishyame bhavam buddho, kripaya tavapada pankaja stita duli sadrisham vichintaya. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servant. 
somehow or other, I've fallen into this ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. So what is being said here? Prabhupada said, this is the mood of chanting Hare Krishna. He said, meditate on this verse. <coughs> because, my dear Lord, I'm your eternal servant. And you are, you are so wonderful, so merciful. Now I'm in this world of birth and death. It's horrible here. Horrible. <laughs> if you like it here, you're an illusion. <laughs> because at any moment, just like I was talking to one devotee just last night, he said he almost got killed just by a slight movement. Krishna protected him. But yes, you know, at any time you can get smashed. This is the way this world is. It's just, it's not a, not a nice place. That's why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati used to say, no place for a gentleman <laughs> or a gentle lady. It's not a nice place. <laughs> and you have to leave it anyway, even if you like it. <laughs> so this material world, Dukalayam, Asasratam, and Nityasubam, it's mentioned over and over. It's a place of suffering. If you want to be happy in the jail, and you think, oh, the jail is nice. I got a nice cell. I get extra, you know, jello on special days, you know. <laughs> I got a TV. Hey, jail's not so bad. <laughs> but you're in the jail. So the material world is a jailhouse. So how do we make it? And so the idea is to try to... Ayinanda tunuje. Please pick me up and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. I'm begging for you. Give me shelter of your lotus feet. Let, allow me to chant your holy names in such a way that I can connect with you in loving devotional service. So by meditating on these prayers that are given to us by the Acharyas, and especially by Lord Chaitanya himself, we can find the consciousness to adopt the process of Krishna consciousness like that. Simply going through the motions of the activities is not enough. One has to pray. As Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, you can't chant attentively unless you pray to chant attentively. He said it's not possible. <clears throat> and then he gives a nice prayer. And he offers a prayer to Haridas Thakur. Uh, uh, o Vaishnav Thakur. Uh, I I am I have no power on my own to chant the holy names of the Lord. But with a particle of faith, please give me the mercy and treasure of the holy name of the Lord. Please be kind upon me. So he prays and he teaches us as that as an example that if we want to be successful in devotional service, we have to pray in order to get the mercy that we needed in order to execute the process properly like that. It's all about prayer. Even the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is a prayer. What is that prayer? Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, my dear Lord, please let me, please engage me in your service. When we're chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we're asking the Lord for service. We're asking the Lord for service. So when the temple president or some authority comes up and says, uh, <clears throat> we need to do this service, we should say, yeah, I've been chanting. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a chance to fulfill my desire. So service allows us to go, what we say, to connect with Krishna in a way that we can keep our full attention on the Supreme Personality. Chanting is service. Chanting is service. But then there's service that includes body, mind, and words. When all when body, mind, and words are engaged in the service of the Lord, that is full devotional service. That is com a complete absorption in devotional service like that. So this is the process. And we can use these, uh, these yoga techniques to help to solidify and to support our process of chanting the holy names, and we can use the process of prayer to also to support and to give us the, the connection with Krishna through his mercy. Because Krishna, Krishna is looking at us in one way. He wants to see how much do they want me? How much do they want me? 
and he sees, oh, this person really wants me, let me help him. Oh, this person's not interested in me, really. They, just want, they just want to get something from me that they can be happy from, so they don't have to suffer so much. But when you really want Krishna, then Krishna says, oh, okay, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> then Krishna helps. And Prabhupada says, unfortunately he says, very few people really want Krishna. <laughs> Most people want what Krishna can give you. Well, material happiness, good health, success in, in various types of activities in material life, good wealth, good, good situation, good friends, nice family, good children, so many nice things. So most people approach the Supreme Lord to get something to better their material existence. But that's not devotional service. Devotional service means, I want Krishna. <laughs> because with Krishna, you get everything. And without Krishna, you, whatever you may get will be destroyed in the element of time. <laughs> so this is devotional service. <clears throat> and therefore, chanting of the Holy Name is the highest form of spiritual practice, which leads to Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. When you're actually chanting attentively, then Srimati Radharani starts to introduce herself into your life and starts to bring you closer to her in the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Your spiritual master gives you the instructions, Lord, Lord Nityananda gives you the mercy, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving you the process of chanting, and Srimati Radharani is inviting you to take part in Sri Vrindavan Dham. But the door to Vrindavan Dham is, has a handle only on the inside. You can't get in. You have to be let in. So when the residents of Vrindavan want you to come in, when they see that you're absorbed in devotional service, when you're chanting the holy names of the Lord and you're happy, enthusiastic to chant, despite the difficulty that come with chanting, and then the mercy of Vrindavan starts to manifest. And then the Radharani shows her kindness on you, as Srila Prabhupada writes in one prayer. This was the prayer when Prabhupada came over on the Jaladuta. He wrote two prayers. One is Markan Daya Bhagavad Dharma, which is his expression of humility to, for the Lord to help him in his mission of spreading Krishna consciousness. The other one was a glorification of the Lord. And in that glorification, the first line he writes, Radharani Sukhihabi. When only, when Radharani is pleased with you, only then is your devotional service reached perfection. So we want to, we beg for the mercy of Srimati Radharani, who is, who is the representative of Sri, she is Vrindavan Ishwari. She controls the Vrindavan element and she controls Krishna. So when you get the favor of Sri Mati Radharani, then you get the favor of Krishna automatically. It's it's automatic. It's come it's simultaneously, practically like that. So this is the process. <clears throat> we want to purify ourselves through this chanting of holy and the holy names as much as possible, and work at that by applying this verse, Chernada Peace and Ichena. It's not easy in this age, to, pra to practice these four things, to be humble, to be tolerant, to be without personal pride, and to be without any desire for personal gain, and to give respects to everyone. It's not an easy thing. But this is the formula Lord Chaitanya has given. <coughs> and and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrita says, he says, take these, this principle of this verse, string it on the holy name of the Lord, and wear it as your ornament. He says, when you practice this, then you become attractive in the eyes of both Krishna and in the activities of devotional service. So we have to practice that. And that's the practice, really. Practicing these four principles and praying to the Lord for his mercy. Otherwise, how can we make it in devotional service? This material energy is too powerful, especially in this age of Kali. It's very, very powerful. 
And distractions come from the external environment and they also come from our own mind and senses. Imagine the distractions from the mind and senses are more stronger because they're more internal and they're right there with us. The mind is always telling us something different than devotional service. And it's like that all the time. The mind is always giving us other things to do or other feelings to focus on something. The mind is always. So learning how to direct that mind by chanting, keeping the mind focused on Krishna and devotional. And if you're doing a service, make that service the most important thing you're doing, whatever it is. If you're worshiping the deities, cleaning the floor, cooking, leading kirtan, giving a class, whatever you're doing, make, do it to the utmost of your ability at all times. When you put all your time, attention, energy, concentration to devotional service, that is samadhi. <laughs> that is good as samadhi because one is absorbed in Krishna through and service to Krishna is non-different than Krishna in the absolute sense. <clears throat> okay, any questions, comments? This is a questionless place. <laughs> no questions. Oh, okay. How come that Krishna uh, separately mentions uh, field of activity as body and senses in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita? Why does Krishna uh, mention separately the... Body, like field of activity, and senses, like one of, well, like two of five factors of Body, the body of t the field of activity is called shetra or shetra gya, n no shetra, which means field, and shetra gya means knower of the field. So in the, it's mentioned shetra and shetra gya means that one is the field. Your your activities in this life are performed by your body, so that's your field of activity. And the shetra gya is Krishna. But you also say Trigya in some sense, you know something about your field of activity. So learning how to use the knowledge given to you by Krishna in order to perform activities in this world and diverting the energy away from material to spiritual. So this body is a field. It's where you perform your activities. You use your mind, you use your senses, in order to do things, and they're all part of the bodily constitution. So it's a field; it's your field of activities. That's mentioned. It's mentioned in the. Uh, it's in the. Um, what chapter is it? It's mentioned in the eighteenth chapter, but then it's mentioned also in the thirteenth chapter. The thirteenth chapter is the most philosophical chapter in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, the one. Uh, one sannyasi in our movement wrote a whole book just on the a a 13th chapter. It's very, very philosophical. It's knowledge of this material energy and how it works. Like that. And that's your, that's your place of residence. You live within the body. That's your field of existence. And that's how you perform all your ta activities with this body and mind using the senses also. And we have 11 senses. Five working senses, no, five knowledge acquiring senses and six working senses. So all together, no, we have five knowledge acquiring, five working, and we have the sixth sense, which is the mind. So there's 11 senses all together. So in with those 11 senses, using the mind in this field of activity known as the body, you perform your activity. This first call is shetra, shetra, the field of your activity. Mm -hmm. It's just a description of how you do things, that's all. <laughs> but you, the soul, are different. You don't touch, the soul never touches material energy because matter and spirit cannot be amalgamated, cannot be put together. It could be side by side, but cannot be put into one. 
So spirit never touches matter, but spirit, because it's covered by matter, it starts to think that it's matter and acts in the form of matter, and that is called material consciousness. So when we come back to understanding we are spirit and we follow the process of bhakti, then we activate the soul and then the soul becomes active. It's no longer, uh, no longer as covered as it was by the material energy. And then it starts to control and direct itself away from the material energy towards the spiritual energy. And that's Krishna in the form of his deity, the form of the holy name, form of scripture, in the form of prasadam. These are all manifestations of Krishna in this age to which are completely spiritual. Prasadam is completely spiritual. The, the scriptures are completely spiritual. The deity is spiritual. The holy name is spiritual. So when we connect the soul with these things and actively perform devotion, then we get away from our material field of activities and we open up the field of spiritual activities. Like that. Then we actually purify this body and the body no longer is material anymore, it becomes spiritual. Because if you put something material into devotional service and you leave it there long enough, gradually it changes from material to spiritual. The example is that if you put an iron metal rod in a fire, and you leave it there long enough, it becomes red hot, and then it becomes white hot. When it becomes white hot, it's no longer metal anymore. It has no more material, metal qualities. It acts like fire. So when you put your body, engage in devotional service, then your body is no longer uh, material, it's spiritual. That's why they say the body of the spiritual master, or the body of a pure devotee, is not material, it's spiritual. and any pure devotee. So gradually we are purifying that field of activity and bring, making it spiritualized. <laughs> yes, Sabina. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for your lecture. Um, if uh, our thoughts, our mind uh, can change our breathing, then for sure this pranayam that uh, you taught us today can also affect our mind and uh, it's helpful. St study it. Um, and I'm wondering uh, what is the connection between the rhythm of our chanting and our breathing with our consciousness? Uh, oftentimes uh, I experience if I chant uh, slower and more attentive, uh, my mind is uh, peaceful. If I chant like really fast, uh, fast uh, I get like really rajasic. And some devotees say that, no, you should really chant uh, one round in less than five minutes. And I find it oh impossible. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So uh, what is the, the actual recommendation and connection to for the rhythm of the speed of chanting? Yeah, very nice question. Rhythm is actuated, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's japa tape, he gives you the formula. When he begins the japa tape, he starts off very methodically. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. You want to connect to the sound. That's the idea. And by doing it very carefully with attention on the sound vibration, gradually the mind picks up and starts to concentrate easily. Then speed will norm naturally increase through concentration. So it's highly recommended by those who know the process to very carefully begin your chanting and make sure you hear like that. Um, I was in Mayapur. I met one mm, devotee, and he told me he was going through the villages mm, in Mayapur and meeting some of these village people, and he was meeting some very people who had some connection with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta through 
either their relatives or even directly. And he said they taught, one person taught him a method of chanting that he said was used by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati in order to help people concentrate on chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And the method was, and you, this is what it was, I can't do it, but if you can do it, it's just very helpful. He said, you take your thumb and you put it on, you know, just like you do the Gayatri. And then you start with here and you say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. And you chant four rounds like that. He said, after four rounds, you have complete concentration, if you're listening carefully. Like that. So the idea is to connect the mind with the sound. So starting off in a very rhythm where you're hearing cl clearly, nicely, actually connects the breath to the chanting, too. It happens automatically. And then the mind, when the breath is not working properly, the mind is never peaceful. It's erratic and disturbed. So you can, if you are simply trying to go fast, you're also disturbing the bodily energies. And therefore, concentration is difficult. We recommend going fast in relationship to people who are tired. Because if you try to do very slow chanting when you're tired, what will happen? Your mind will wander. Your mind will wander. So sometimes we say chant fast in order so you can connect yourself to the sound and wake up. <laughs> Cheap jago. <laughs> but generally, of course, we shouldn't be tired, but if we are, a little speed will help to concentrate. But the idea is to hear nicely. Prabhupada makes that point even in the scriptures. He said the whole process of Krishna consciousness is to clearly pronounce the sound vibration of the Krishna's name and to hear. So clear pronunciation and hearing is the foundation for concentration. And then, as you do that, you can start adding the mood of prayer. And then, as that becomes, then it's then you can start to add that mood of prayer into the into the chanting. And then you actually start, and you're actually within the sound vibration, but you're also in the mood of prayer at the same time. So uh, I agree with you, you know, wholeheartedly. Start off slowly and hear nicely it's ja it's not beat the clock japa <laughs> uh, one devotee i heard uh, even chants uh, so fast that uh, the rhythm of the breathing is reminding to the fire breath like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. like really <laughs> if he's hearing nicely that's that's perfect <coughs> I know one devotee said he can do he can do a round in three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and I believe him. He's actually expert, and he's written books on it, mm. and he teaches people how to chant and chant sixty four rounds every day. Mm. But try you have to come up to that step. It's just you know if you try to begin on that level, mm. <laughs> like that. Thank you. Ch pro chanting is a process, and you have to apply your concentration on the sound. If you're not hearing, then you're not chanting properly. You have to hear. That's the whole thing. And speed generally comes when he with hearing. But if you put speed before hearing, forget it. You have to put hearing, and then you. there's no limit how fast you can go when you're hearing. <laughs> it's not like you're actually trying to do it. It actually ca comes automatically. The speed will start to increase automatically. But make sure the pronunciation is right. It's not, a, it's not like... 
It's snicker, 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 room, 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 room. It's not like that. Well, sometimes we use a little joke. Devotees chanting like that, snicker, 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 room, 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 room. And he dies, and he wakes up, and there's two men there. He said, who are you? My name is Snicker, and his is Room. You've been chanting our name. <laughs> it's Krishna. <laughs> so if you want to find out whether you're pronouncing right, put a little tape device next to you and record your chanting and then play it back. We used to do that with devotees, and then we'd play it back. That's not me. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> so pronunciate, and therefore, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, chapter 17, verse 32 in the purport, Prabhupada teaches us, or mentions, chant using the upper and lower lip, avoid, avoid the hissing sound. He says that in the, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. In one tape, he makes fun of people who chant like that. He starts m mimicking that kind of chanting, just like I did. He said, this is not japa. <laughs> so therefore, we have to chant clearly and with concentration. Don't be in a hurry. I fall into that sometimes because sometimes I feel pressured with time and then I find myself trying to go faster just to get it done. But then I catch myself and say, that's not right. And slow down. Hear nicely. It's all about hearing. <laughs> Read Harinam Chintamani in Bhaktivinoda, of course, commentary on the Ten Offenses, which is given by Srila Haridas Thakur. That book will help you a lot in your chanting. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Yes, Mr. Roberto. This is your question or his question? Uh, my question. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I know that uh, some that some devotees that do jyotish and stuff they say that we have this uh, manifested karma that not all of manifested karma Krishna takes if he sees that this karma can help us in devotional service. So, in the way that this karma that is manifested some devotees, let's say, with finance or with, I don't know, health or something. It's something that Krishna sees that it will help in devotional service. That's why he didn't take it. Krishna Is can do whatever he wants. <laughs> He's God. If he wants to change the rules, he can. The point is, and this is the point of your question, Krishna will do what's beneficial for the devotee. So... That's a principle. The principle is whether he, what he does this or what he does that. How do we know? Sometimes we say, we guess. But we understand, Krishna tells you what he does and what he doesn't do. But sometimes he can also break that because if it helps the devotee. He will always act for the benefit of the devotee. So if he wants to leave some manifest karma to help that devotee, become detached, and then he'll, he can do that also. Mm -hmm. Point is, Krishna is not restricted by anything. Mm -hmm. But he's always trying to favor his devotee. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.